How often have you made the effort to go somewhere to do some photography only to realise you've forgotten one vital piece of gear or the location wasn't quite what you were expecting? In this video I'll discuss the ways I like to plan for my photography trips and how to maximise your chances of getting the shots you really want. Well, hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Well, you know, we spend so much money on our photography gear and we're so focused on getting the best gear to take the best photos that often we forget to put the same effort and planning into our photography trips. You could be planning a trip to another country or something as simple as a two hour drive away, but both of those trips still need some sort of planning. That being said, and after traveling around the world for many years doing photography, here are my top five tips for planning a successful photography trip. The amount of times I have always forgotten a certain piece of camera gear or a lens has always hindered my photography trips. Write up a checklist on your phone or piece of paper that you can tick off and make sure that you have all the gear you need for the type of photography you intend to do. For example, I'm a shocker for forgetting my shutter release cable that I use for long exposure shots. Now it lives permanently in my bag so I never forget it. Extra batteries, lens cleaning cloths, all the way down to things like buying a set of waders because I knew the terrain and conditions I would be facing in Iceland and Scotland would be pretty wet and boggy. Having all the gear you need on hand makes for a much more enjoyable trip as you have all your bases covered. Use Instagram to your advantage and actually have other people do your hard reconnaissance work for you. Yes, Instagram is actually good for something. By simply putting in the location and searching it as a hashtag and then clicking on recent, you can gauge what's happening in that area. You can simply narrow down the search to the most recent photos taken and that will tell you if a waterfall is flowing at full strength, certain trees are flowering or autumn leaves are falling in a certain area. I use this method when I photograph flowering jacaranda trees and natural bridge waterfall. Try looking for recent photos that people have posted with their phone and have commented about what was happening at the location like, hey had the most awesome day today at natural bridge. Using my pack method, that stands for plane, ACOM, car. With these three essential items already booked, you're already setting yourself up for a successful photography trip. I always tend to stay in one location for three or four nights, never just one. Firstly, it is a continual pain to keep packing stuff and be on the move, wasting valuable photography time. And secondly, the weather could be garbage one day but clear the next. A good example of this was when I was in both Iceland at the ice beach near Jokasalan Lagoon and New Zealand at Lake Matheson. On the day prior to visiting these spots, the weather was horrendous, but because I had a couple of days up my sleeve, I was able to successfully photograph them the way I wanted. Whenever I'm in a certain location, I like to take advantage of the entire area as much as I can. For example, it may not only be a good landscape photography location, but it could be full of wildlife, or the town or city you're located in could have interesting architecture. Now a little side note here, I like to get up very early and beat the tourist crowds to certain locations. I was the first on location at the Quirang in the Isle of Skye in Scotland, and managed to capture some great shots as the sun broke through the clouds. I also captured these shots of Venice with no tourists and St. Mark's Square. Using a long range weather service from the net can actually give you a better idea of the type of weather you're going to be in for. Now we all know weather can change in an instant, but having a rough idea of possible cloud coverage Snow, storms, clear skies or temperatures can help you prepare for what you may be in for. You might have to pack thermals, wet weather gear or at the end of the scale, lots of sunscreen. 
Well guys, I hope these tips help you out. By all means, if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments below. As I've always said, the better organized you are when it comes to going away on photography trips, the more likelihood it is that you're gonna come back with the shots you really want. Thanks so much for watching. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.